Hi, I'm Carrie Lebosky, an Extension Soil Fertility and Nutrient Management Specialist at the University of Wisconsin. It's a beautiful September day and I'm standing in the middle of a soybean field at our Arlington Ag Research Station. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about potassium deficiency in soybean. Uh, Potassium deficiency is a perennial problem uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, not everyone has problems with it, but some folks have problems all the time. So how do you identify potassium deficiency? Well, late season uh, deficiency symptoms are an exaggerated form of, of earlier season symptomology. Uh, if we look here at this plant, you can see that uh, we have yellowing more on the leaf margins, and then it progresses in towards the center. Uh, we also have some necrosis on the leaf margins where it's been uh, chlorotic long enough that the tissue is dying back. This type of symptomology can be seen early in the growing season as well. Uh, earlier you may not see uh, quite some of the, the uh, necrotic tissue, it might uh, just be, be yellow. Now, if you notice the difference between the uh, soybeans on my left and right, uh, that's because there's some different uh, potassium uh, rates applied here. On my uh, right here, we have uh, no potash was broadcast uh, on these plots uh, this year. And the soil test, I should note, was 48 parts per million, so that's a very low soil test K level. And we had no K applied here on the right. And on the left, uh, we had 120 pounds of potash applied. Now on both of these plots uh, there was phosphate applied at 90 pounds per acre. So we're really just seeing the effect of uh, potassium uh, at when phosphorus has been supplied. Now the um, Big differences you can see between these plots, there's obviously height differences. Uh, we've got taller plants, fuller plants. Uh, there's less uh, K deficiency showing up uh, where we have the, the K rate at 120 pounds. Where we didn't apply any, you can see shorter plants, a lot more deficiency symptoms. And as we look down into the, the canopy, there's uh, fewer pods and smaller beans in there. I should note that the soil test P level in this field was also very low. It was five part per million Bray. So we would expect to see responses like this uh, to both P and K at this site. Okay, we are sitting on the edge of the field now and we've got some of the plants pulled out. What I've done is I've taken out one plant um, and we've got it laid out on the ground and then I also have from another plant, I took off all the beans or I should say all the pods on that plant and have them laid out as well. So we can kind of see the differences uh, between uh, what potassium and phosphorus are doing uh, here out in the field. So if we start here, uh, we've got the plot where we had no phosphorus and no potassium applied. Remember the soil test levels were very low. We've got a plant that's showing uh, some deficiency symptoms for potassium. It's a pretty puny plant considering this is uh, early September. Uh, there's a few pods on here. They're very thin uh, pods. And if we open uh, one up, we have um, just only two beans in the t pod. They're not particularly large beans, but they are filling in. Uh, although some of these pods here are very, very thin, so they're not filling out very well. And more often than not, it looks like we've got a two bean pod rather than a three bean pod. Now when we uh, look at the plant where we had no phosphorus and 120 pounds of potash applied, we can see this plant is so much uh, larger than the previous plant. The leaves are bigger. Uh, we're seeing more pods along the stems. Uh, the pods also seem to be filled out uh, a little bit more. And here, um, I've opened up a pod. We can see that we've got three beans in there and they're beginning to fill. And this is generally looking better and if we look at the number of pods off of just one plant, there's more of them here uh, compared to where uh, there was no P or K applied. Now, if we just want to look at the effect that phosphorus had, uh, here we have where 90 pounds of phosphate was applied and no potash at all. Uh, we can see the plant is bigger still. Um, so if we have, uh, we get a little bit bigger plant when we've got the phosphate applied rather than potash. Uh, but it, and it seems that we're maybe getting uh, a little bit more uh, in the number of pods here. The pile seems to be a little bit bigger, but I don't have a scale with me uh, to be able to say 
uh, scientifically uh, that that is uh, truly more. Um, opening up a pod, we have uh, three beans in there. This one's not filled out quite so well. They tend to be a little bit thinner uh, pods and that seed's a little bit uh, skinnier uh, compared to uh, the previous one where we had some potash applied. Now if we want to see uh, what happens here when we are putting 90 pounds of phosphate on, uh, what's the effect of uh, potassium? And that's what we've got here. Uh, so we're adding in, compared to the one we just saw with 90p no K, now we've got 90p 120 pounds of K. We can see we have uh, quite a large plant. This is by far our biggest plant, tallest, the most leaves, the most branches out there. Uh, look at all the pods along the stem. And if we look at our pile of pods uh, laying on the bag there, that's definitely the, the biggest amount of uh, pods that we have. I've opened one up so that you can see we've got a three bean uh, pod in there and they're filling out pretty nicely. That's a, a nice uh, seed in there and it's much better seed uh, compared to where we had 90p and no K. 90p and no K here has a skinny seed a little bit smaller and then the 90p and 120 pounds K, the, the seeds filled out better. So <clears throat> what we're looking at overall with all these plants here is that uh, the effect of the interaction between P and K. Now, if we don't apply any P and K and our soil test levels are low, we've got pretty puny plants. We can apply some K and we'll get uh, a better looking plant, uh, some more pods on there, uh, or we could apply some phosphate and get a little bit better looking plant as well. Uh, perhaps even a better looking plant than if we just apply uh, potash. And then the best combination is really to make sure we're supplying adequate amount of phosphorus and potassium and we get a good uh, amount of uh, plant growth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, pods out there that were, uh, that, you know, were flowered and uh, pollinated and we're getting a, a better yield. So that's kind of the, the basics of uh, the yield effects on uh, with potassium or potassium deficiency you could say. Some other things to keep in mind with potassium deficiency are, are the effects it can have on other things. So K, K deficiency uh, can lead to weak stems in some cases and it also may increase the potential for diseases. Along with that, if you have soybean aphid in your field and you have K deficiency, you may see that the soy, soybean aphid populations increase faster if in the K deficient areas compared to areas of the field that aren't K deficient. Now, potassium deficiency uh, is an obvious problem in areas where you have low availability, like low soil test K levels. Uh, we also tend to see uh, more problems with K deficiency in uh, no-till fields, uh, but compacted ground can be a big problem as well. And that's because the plants, the roots have a, a limited root system or can have a limited root system where we have compaction and then the uh, path that potassium needs to move from where it's at to the root uh, becomes uh, more tortuous and a little bit takes longer for the plant to take up that that nutrient so compaction can be a big problem and sometimes we see uh, issues more in headland areas uh, than out in the bulk field because we ha are doing a lot of turning and a lot of uh, compacting on those headland areas. So based on the size of the plants and the number of pods we have, you can see that 48 part per million soil test K level really isn't adequate to grow soybean here unless we're fertilizing. Now you might want to think about uh, what soil test K levels you need to have uh, in order to maintain uh, good growth. So here in Wisconsin, our recommendations are that the critical level, level of soil test K uh, on our silt loam soils, that would, and I broaden that out to our medium and fine textured soils in southern and eastern Wisconsin, is you want to maintain a soil test K over 80 parts per million. Uh, getting less than that, uh, you're going to start running into more trouble. In central and northern Wisconsin on these medium and fine textured soils, uh, you can, the soil test level can be a little bit higher. You need to maintain it a little bit higher at more than 100 parts per million. Uh, 
And then if we uh, go to our coarse textured sandy soils, uh, you want to maintain soil test K levels over 60 parts per million. Now the big difference between the, the sandy soils and the silt loam soils is that the sandy soils have a lower cation exchange capacity and can hold less K, uh, so we really can't maintain it at higher levels. Now, once you're at uh, the critical level, uh, our recommendations, that would mean that you're in the optimum soil test category, our recommendations for potassium are based on crop removal. So if you want to get an idea of how much uh, potassium you're removing in your crop, uh, just based on the grain yield, we remove about 1.4 pounds of K2O per bushel of soybean. Now, some guys uh, like to uh, take and bale the straw on their, from the soybean. Uh, whether they uh, take it back into the barn as bedding or sell it to someone else, uh, that straw also contains potassium. And there's about 19 pounds of K2O per dry matter ton of, of the straw. So if you're considering uh, selling uh, some of that straw to, to someone else, uh, consider the nutrient value contained in that straw should also keep in mind that uh, the K in the, in the straw uh, will leach out. So the longer the straw sits on the ground after harvest and the more it's rained, uh, there'll be less in the straw itself and will have leaked out and, and will be in the soil. So remember, potassium is probably the most important nutrient that we supply to a soybean crop in Wisconsin. Don't overlook it in your rotation. Consider remediating compacted areas if that's an where you've had some challenges with potassium deficiency in the past, and soil tests to determine the amount of uh, soil availability of potassium and follow the recommendations in A2809, Nutrient Application Guidelines for Field, Vegetable, and Fruit Crops in Wisconsin.